Okay, so this is my master mirror light uh, that I made. So it's uh, the my sensors light. Um, it's a dimmable LED. So I'll just give you a quick demo here. Can fade between one and a hundred. <coughs> turn it off. There's my cat. Can turn it on to. 100 brightness there and then like I said fade anywhere in between so the other thing I did on here is I added buttons um, so I could turn on and off the mirror so I got an on off button so it's the same one and then I can uh, raise the brightness 10% by pressing the button just next to the on off button or lower it 10% uh, and when I press the on off button from here, it will remember my dim level. So I can resume to that same level just by turning it on again. So I did that just so um, if we were at the mirror, didn't have our phones with us, could easily turn on and off um, and fade to the different levels. Also, if you hold the button down, it'll continually fade up until it hits 100 or down until it hits zero. And if it hits zero, next time you turn it on, it'll fade to 50%. I also added a little motion sensor here, so um, just set up my play condition in Vera. So when it's dark outside, this light will automatically turn on if there's motion triggered. Okay, so now I'm just going to give a quick overview of how I put all this together. But before I do that, I just want to give a big thank you to Bruce Lacey. He's the person who came up with the dimmable LED concept, um, and without that I wouldn't have been able to do this. So thanks, Bruce. Okay, so first... Um, just wanted to show you how I put together the um, Arduinos and um, the PCB board here. Um, I'm not going to go into much detail on how to get it all together. Um, if you're interested in that, I put together a video on a smart outlet that you can check out, um, you know, to, how to solder everything and how to put together all the radio and everything. Um, but just really quickly, what I did was um, just wired everything in, soldered it in for better connections. Uh, and I actually found that one of my joints was connected but not great. Um, so I had to go back in and solder it to make sure it was um, getting a really good contact because it was uh, basically losing power to my LED. Um, just really strange behavior. So, And what I found out it was is just a bad connection, a bad solder. So make sure if you're going to do this that you really get those joints done well. Okay, anyway, so what I did here um, is I just put some hot glue on here to kind of float, put a little space so it's not crimping down on my wires when I screw it in with these little screws. Um, I've got my Pro Mini here. I've got my radio, and uh, I have uh, an antenna soldered into my radio. Um, this is fairly far away from my gateway, so this actually helps communication. Um, I talk about this in my Smart Outlet video. Basically though, if you don't need it, don't use it. Um, some people have said it can hinder performance. Okay, moving on. Uh, I just have a 5 volt regulator here. Um, basically, your LEDs will use 12 volt power, so that's what's coming in um, right here that I've wired in. Um, but I actually ended up frying one of my Arduino Pro Minis. Um, when I plugged in directly to 12 volt power at one point. So now um, I just put in a 5 volt regulator whenever I'm going off 12 volt power just to, to ensure that won't happen. Um, I know it's supposed to be able to handle 12 volts but for some reason it wasn't on mine. So now I just put in a cheap regulator to, to ensure that um, I don't fry it. Uh, I also have some capacitors in there to filter out the power. Um, I'm going to upload a wiring diagram so you can see what I've done there. Um, but basically it just filters out the power so it's a little cleaner. Um, and then under here I have a tiny little 3.3 volt um, regulator that I, I take my 5 volt um, power and then go that into my 3.3 volt regulator. And that's for the radio. So the radio needs 3.3 volts. Okay, and then this is my um, MOSFET and transi transistor here. So that's going to be what will enable dimming. So it's going to use a pulse width modulation um, 
pin on your Arduino and then from there you'll take the um, output of that into the ground of your LED. So that's going to enable the dimming. So it's just um, a MOSFET transistor. I'll list the exact part number that I use uh, on the um, info of the video. I'll put it in a forum post, but that link will be the info of the video. Okay. Uh, and then here I have power down to my um, dimming buttons and motion sensor. And then uh, these are just my um, buttons and motion sensor inputs, which go down to my motion sensor and buttons. Okay, so moving on down to my buttons and sensor, um, but before I get there, I just want to point out the wiring. This is just Cat6 cable, so 23 gauge wire. Um, anything equivalent to that you can use. Um, I just had some of that laying around, some extra, so I used that. So now I have my buttons here. Um, basically, all these are uh, interconnected with ground, so that's this ground wire. It's actually coming off the motion sensor and then each of them are connected in the ground. And then on the back here, they each have their own output, um, which goes to the pins on the Pro Mini. Okay, and then down here, I have my motion sensor. So I just have a standard uh, motion sensor module uh, you can get from the My Sensor store, but I desoldered the actual sensor piece here, so that's the only thing that's sticking out underneath my mirror, so I don't have this giant um, module here uh, visible. Uh, and then I basically just wired up just random parts laying around the house, um, you know, just a way to hold on my my buttons here. So I'm sure you can find anything, um, find something that'll work for you. And then to hold on my module here, I just use some hot glue. Seems to be holding on pretty well. Uh, I have a capacitor in here just to filter out the power. I actually had on here before a distance sensor uh, because this mirror is not in like a an actual room. It's part of my bedroom. I didn't want my mirror light turning on um, when I triggered it with with motion. So I originally tried a distance sensor, but I had some problems with uh, interference when the LEDs were on. So I had capacitors and buck converters and everything. Um, but anyway, this capacitor is kind of just a remnant of that. I just left it because it was already soldered on there, and thought it might help filter out the power a little bit. But um, this motion sensor is working great for me. I just turned the sensitivity all the way down uh, for my purposes. Uh, and obviously you could adjust that to what works for you. Okay, moving on to the LED strip. This is just a five meter strip of 3528 SMD warm white uh, non-waterproof LEDs. Um, just You can also get those in the My Sensor store and I'll provide a link to that as well. Um, it's got double stick tape on it, but I found that that doesn't really work that well for me. So what I ended up doing is just putting on some hot glue um, in some of the places, like the corners. And then that, in conjunction with the double stick tape, seems to work very well for me. So I just used the full five meters on my mirror. I was hoping to get two uh, loops all the way around it, but um, I wasn't able to get, get that much all the way on the top. But it seems to provide enough light for me. Uh, and then you can see here I just joined the second loop with some, um, I think they're 18 gauge wires here. I also made some spacers that I just uh, drilled a hole into and then ultimately screwed into my mirror. Uh, this is just a standard 2x2 two two piece of wood. Um, but you could use anything, basically you just need to get that mirror floating off your wall a little bit. So I mentioned before that the LEDs use 12 volt power, which is what I have going in here. Um, this is just a wire to kind of make my connections easier. I personally have converted an old computer power supply to run 12 volt power throughout my house. Uh, so I can power all my LED projects. I probably now have, I don't know, six or seven uh, different LEDs powered off that power supply. Um, I'm not going to cover that in this video though. Um, but if you're interested in it, maybe I can uh, just shoot me a note in the comments and maybe I can make a video on how I did that at a later point. Um, but anyway, what you need is just a 12 volt power supply. Uh, the easiest thing to do, uh, if you're not sure on how to do the computer power supply, is just to look in the My Sensor store and there's a link to a 12 volt power supply there. Okay, so I really quickly wanted to show you the wiring diagram. Uh, if you've never seen one of these before, it could be a little bit confusing. Uh, so basically, here's the power in from your 12 volt power. 
uh, this whole rail over here is going to be 12 volt power. So you're going to feed into uh, your 5 volt voltage regulator here. You're going to have two capacitors on there, a 10 UF and a 0.1 UF. So those, uh, just make sure you check the polarity on those. This little white strip means it's ground. I've reversed them here just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Um, so anyway, this will be the positive and the negative. And then you can see here's the ground going into the regulator. And then the output of the regulator is going to be this pin here. So that's going to go up into the motion sensor and also going to feed my 3.3 voltage regulator as well as the raw pin on the Arduino. Okay, the 12 volt is going to carry along down to here. And this is, I didn't have a good image for the LED strip lights, so I just chose an LED here. So that's obviously just going to be the power, the 12 volt power in your LED. Um, we have the MOSFET uh, right here. The item number is IRLZ44N. Uh, so basically the um, ground is going to go in here on the right hand pin. The ground out to the LED is going to be the center pin. And then the gate pin is going to be pin 3 on the Arduino. I'm going to upload this whole file so you can open it. What's nice about that is you can actually see what the pins are if you hover over them. So it'll show you that uh, the source and then the drain pin and the gate. Um, so I'll upload that for you. Just uh, keep on moving here. We've got a 3.3 regulator. Um, just I just chose this kind of this image here. Mine are much smaller, uh, as you saw from the video, but uh, you can use any kind that works for you. These are uh, just 3.3 voltage regulator. And then I've got a 10 UF capacitor on the output of that. So the output here is going to go up to the input on my radio, which will also, uh, the radio then goes to ground. And then the wiring in here uh, corresponds with the MySensors website colors. Uh, I just drew it on here to the different pins on the Arduino as well. Uh, also on here, I didn't have a motion sensor icon or image, I guess. So um, I just kind of put some text up there with three connections. So we've got 5 volt power, ground, and then the center pin is the, um, I guess, trigger. And then it goes into pin 6 on the Arduino. And then uh, you can see that pin 4 goes into my power button, pin 8 goes into my fade up, and pin 7 goes to my fade down. So that's just a quick overview. Um, if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments, but hopefully that'll make sense for you. Just wanted to show you a couple of quick things in the code here that you may want to change if you're doing this yourself. The first thing is here is the node ID. Right now I have it set to auto, uh, but you could change it to a static number if you wanted to assign a node. Personally, I do that with all my nodes. That way when you do upgrades, uh, you can just specify that same node ID. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is this my message light message. So with the Vera, you have to send two messages in order to update a dimmer switch or a dimmer light. So the dimmer message adjusts the dimmer values in the dimmer slider. The light message will ad adjust the light on or off. So ideally you'd send both of those. So your light icon would turn on and off when the dimmer's on. And then obviously your dimmer slider would update. I have quite a few my sensors nodes and dimmers, so in order to optimize the messages being sent, I've actually chose to omit the light message, uh, just so I can send fewer number of messages back and forth to my gateway. So if you are going to do that, what you'll want to do is uncomment it here, and then go all the way to the bottom, and then uncomment it here as well. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know down in the comments of the video. Thanks, everyone.